The absolute value parent function is written y equals the absolute value of x. It also can be written as f of x equals the absolute value of x. These bars represent absolute value. An absolute value is the distance away from zero. And since it's the distance away from zero, it's always positive. To graph the absolute value function, we will look at some key points, negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. If we evaluate for the absolute value of negative two, we will get two because it is always positive. So the absolute value of negative one is one, the absolute value of zero is zero, the absolute value of one is one, and the absolute value of two is two. This is the graph of the absolute parent function. It is v-shaped and in the equation itself is the word value which has a v in it so that should help you to remember that it is absolute value. And let's look for the domain and range of the absolute value. If we do x, y, check your id at the door, the domain is underneath the letter x so therefore the domain is a set of all x values. So let's arrow down to the x-axis until we get to the end of the graph or to our stopping point. And I do not have a stopping point on this graph because there is an arrow so this goes to positive infinity. Let's do the same thing for this side of the graph and again because I have an arrow here this graph is going to positive infinity to the left. From the starting point, I can draw an arrow to the right and an arrow to the left, and I include all the x values. I can see on this line, all the x values are being covered. So the domain is the set of values from negative infinity to positive infinity, or all real numbers. And that can be denoted with a little symbol, the r with the little parallel lines through it. Let's look at the range. When I do x, y, check, the I, check your id at the door, the range is the set of all y values. Or let's draw arrows to the y axis from both sides of the graph. We can see that the graph does not go below this point right here, and it continues to go up to infinity this direction because of this arrow and this arrow. So our graph is going from zero, which is the y value, to positive infinity. Remember zero is in a bracket because it does include zero. This is also called my starting point. We also can write the range as all the values greater than or equal to zero. Now turn your foldable over to the back of your paper and let's write what we remember about our general transformations. All in absolute value, plus or minus k. Let's talk about our y changes. Our y changes is in the front and in the back of our function. The negative sign, if you remember from our last unit, is a reflection across the x-axis. The a is a stretch if it's greater than 1. It's between 0 and 1. It's a shrink or compression and k is up or down movement. Now let's talk about x change. If we have a minus sign inside the absolute value, a reflection across the y-axis. Remember this is an exception to the liar rule. If b is greater than 1, then this is a shrink. If 0 is less than b is less than 1, we have a stretch. Remember our liar rule says that x is a liar, so we want to go the opposite of the way we think. And h is our right-left movement, or left-right movement. So now, how do we think each of the following function differs from the parent function? Here I have a 2 out front. We have a vertical change of 2. So it's a vertical stretch by 2. In this problem, I have a vertical 
movement up, but I also have horizontal movement to the right. So we go right 5, because remember this is in X, and X is a liar, so we have to move to the right instead, 5. So right 5 and up 2. In the next problem, we have a vertical stretch by 2 and vertical movement up, but we have horizontal movement left. And we also have a reflection. The negative sign represents a reflection across the x-axis. The 2 represents a vertical stretch. The 5 represents movement left. And the negative 2 represents down 2. Graph the following without a calculator. Think of this right here as a slope of 1 because there's no number there. So think of it like rise over run. Here we're going to move right 5 and up 2. Our vertical movement was up 2 and our horizontal movement is right 5. So the starting point is right here. We're going to move right 5 and up 2. And our slope is 1, so up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. Again, the same thing on this side, except we're just going in the opposite direction for our V-shape. How did I get this point again? Well, remember, we moved right 5 from the original function. Remember, the original parent function always starts right here at 0, 0. So it moved to the right 5 and up 2. You can also get it by using the points. Remember, we are adding 2 to all the y's and adding 5 to all the original x's. Notice these points are going to be the same thing as here. 3, 4, to the right 4, up 3, to the right 5, up 2, to the right 6, up 3, and to the right 7, up 4. So notice they're the same points. Let's look at another transformation. Oh, domain and range. Well, since this is the chi um, child of the parent, the domain is also going to be all real numbers. And remember, you can get that by arrowing down to the x-axis. And since there's arrows on both sides of this graph, that means it continues, it keeps on going from on the graph from the starting point, it keeps on going to infinity this way, and it keeps on going to infinity this way. So it's negative infinity to positive infinity. Let's look at the range. Arrow everything over to the y, and then this graph would keep going up because, again, because of these arrows. So that means this graph is starting right here where that blue is and it keeps going up to positive infinity. Now this y value here is a 2. So the range is 2 to positive infinity. Let's look at the next graph. We are flipping the graph or reflecting over the x and we are doing we have a vertical stretch by 2 and we move up 1. The slope here, because we actually have a, we can use this as the slope, is actually negative 2. So negative 2 over 1 because of this 2 right here. And we start our starting point. This is the starting point for all the transformations for an absolute value. We knew that we were translating up 1, so this is the new starting point right here. And the slope is down 2 over 1 to get to the next point. Down 2 over 1. Down 2 over 1. Down 2 over 1. Down 2 over 1. And then the same thing on this side. To see if these are indeed the correct points, we knew we had a 
vertical stretch and a reflection and we were moving up one and all the x values stayed the same so these are the original x values our domain are our x values and if I arrow this graph up to the x axis including this little piece here there is no x uncovered on this graph it goes in both directions from negative infinity to positive infinity. So arrow in over to the Y. I have a stopping point right here, but you can see that this graph is starting here and going down to infinity. We have negative infinity to positive infinity, which is all real numbers. Hmm, I think there's a pattern here. So is this one, and so is the parent. The range has a starting place right here at 1, and we're going to, whoops, we always do least to greatest. This is negative infinity to, the y value here is 1. So negative infinity to positive 1 in brackets.